Hey friends, let's build out another mid-journey design in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're going to use RunwayML to generate the videos for this website, and then we'll use ChatGPT to help us generate this cool WebGL transition. So the first thing we want to do is clean up and isolate these background images. So I'm just going to bring the image into Photoshop, duplicate the layer with Command J, and then use the marquee tool, shortcut M, to draw a selection around the background image. Then we're just gonna copy and paste it into a new document. Then we're gonna use the remove tool, shortcut J, to just brush over all these UI elements that we don't want in our frame. Then we're gonna go into image size, which is command option I for the shortcut, and just adjust the pixel size to whatever size you want your video to be. Then we're just gonna save it out and do the same thing to the other header background. And then again for these little square images at the bottom as well. We're gonna go over to Runway ML and use Gen 2 and start with image. You can just drag and drop your image in here. There are also other parameters you can adjust like the camera motion controls, but we're just gonna leave it as is and hit generate. So this looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and download this to our desktop and then go ahead and do the same thing for all the other images in our design. So generate videos out of those. You may have to play with the settings and generate a few variations, but eventually you should get something that works. Now those smaller images were really tiny. So I'm gonna drag them into Discord and then copy the link and use Midjourney to upscale the images. So we're gonna use this link as part of our prompt and then describe whatever it is we want it to look like. So here I'm just gonna say aliens walking through a crystal world and use that to generate a larger image that we can then use in Runway ML for generating a video. So we'll save that to desktop and we can go ahead and do the same thing for the other images. One other feature I wanted to point out is they added this very region button, which allows you to in paint and select a region of the image that you want to edit. So you can go ahead and prompt that region. Then we just bring those back into Runway ML and generate videos out of them. So I find when asking ChatGPT for code, it's best to break things out into sections. So we're first going to ask ChatGPT to generate a JavaScript function that creates a video element, and we're going to specify attributes of that element. So then we just go and update the URL to our video and test it out and it looks like it's working. We can make sure it loads multiple videos by adding the other URL, and that looks good too. One thing I wanna change is I wanna make sure that the video loops. I also wanna make sure the function returns the video element instead of appending it to the document. Now we're gonna ask ChatGPT to create a function which initializes a WebGL canvas. Next, we're gonna ask for a function that draws the video onto the WebGL canvas. Then we just copy and paste it into our JavaScript. And then we're gonna initialize our WebGL canvas outside of the asynchronous load video call. And then we're just gonna go back in and after our videos are loaded, we're going to call our draw video on canvas method passing in the first video of the video elements array. And here you can see we have our video showing up on our canvas. It's paused and upside down, but we'll go ahead and fix that in a bit. To get the video to play, we just go into our can play through listener and call play on the video. Now let's just ask ChatGPT why it's upside down. It gave us a new vertex shader, so let's just go in and replace the code for that. Cool, and now it's animating. So next let's go ahead and fix the size of it. First, I'm gonna make our canvas variable global so that we can access it throughout the application. Then I'm gonna resize the canvas element to be the same size as the first video. 
you'll see this put it down in the corner. So we're just going to ask ChatGPT to help us fix that. It gave us a function that adjusts the size and sets the viewport on our WebGL contacts. So let's just drop that in our code. Cool, so now we have it sized appropriately to fit the full canvas element. Now I wanna make it so whenever the user clicks, it switches to another video. So it gave us a index variable that we can toggle and also a variable that represents the current video element and this method, which is gonna actually switch the video. Then I just do some cleanup by moving our videos array to the top and cleaning up the method where they referenced a video sources array and just renaming that to videos. Then I just create the click event handler to call the switch video method. So now whenever we click the window, it'll toggle between the two videos. So there's some improvements we can do to the code that ChatGPT wrote. What, one thing I wanna do is make sure that it's not creating a new video element every time we toggle the video. So let's go ahead and remove that. Then in our animation loop, I'm gonna create a variable for our current video which references the index within the array. And then we're just gonna make sure that we're drawing the image 2D of that video, of that variable. One other thing we need to do is make sure we're collecting all the video elements in an array, which I'm gonna make global here. And we're just gonna have that be the results of our load video method. So we're gonna update those variables. And then when we reference our current video in our animation loop, we're gonna reference the element. Cool, so this looks a little nicer and it should be a lot more optimized performance wise as well. Next, I wanted to change the fragment shader so that it has a uniform which allows us to manipulate a lens distortion effect. First, I'm gonna create an object just to store the values that we're gonna be changing for this uniform. Then we're gonna copy and paste the shader code for our fragment shader. Next, we're just gonna copy this code snippet where it creates the uniform and copy that into our draw video on canvas method and then do the same thing for this line where it updates the value of the uniform inside our animation loop so if we update the distortion value to that value object that we had created before and change its value you can see we get this kind of an effect which is actually more of a swirling than a fisheye distortion that I was going for so I went back and forth with chat GPT some more trying to get it close to what I wanted and then went in manually some and just tweaked values until I got the effect that I was going after. Next, I asked for a few more uniforms to adjust the exposure, contrast and brightness of the image so that we can continue to play around with those as well as the distortion. Then it's just a matter of going in and updating the shaders as well as the uniforms within our JavaScript code. So now we should be able to animate these values and see them change within our video. Next, I wanna be able to easily animate these values. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to create a tweening class that I can use to animate various values. We could use the library like GSAP, but I'm trying to go no library here and just get it all done with ChatGPT. I wanted to be able to pass in different linear interpolation methods for different kinds of easing. So I 
made sure that it included this as well. Then I just ask it for all of the easing equations that I could use with it. So then I just copy all this code, create a tween JavaScript file and paste it all in. So now we can test out our tweening class on one of our values. And now I'm going to create a target object just with all of my target values that I want it to animate to. One last bit of functionality I need is a callback method here so that we know when the tween is completed. So we can just go through and update our tween to call our callback and then just go through our tween between class to add the callback method as well when everything is finished. Then what I want it to do is actually switch the video each time the tween completes and animate the values back in. So we're going to do this all on click. So you can see it's animating out. We just need to make it animate back in once that's done. I forgot I was using animating the actual values themselves. So we need to have an initial values object and then the values that we're going to animate will be a copy of that. So now you can see we have our videos transitioning from one to another using our lens distortion shader effect. So from here, we can just go ahead and do HTML markup to design out the rest of the site and get it looking the way we want. So here's the results that I ended up with. You can see um, we've got other elements that I've added in here, things like videos that play on hover. And of course, you can click to transition between the two different views. So let me know what you think of the comments. Thanks for checking it out.